Okay, welcome to this weekly discussion of effective altruism for Christians. This is week 120, and we are talking today about the future of effective altruism. So in just a few words, what is EA or effective altruism? It's an idea uh, to use reason and evidence to do the most good we can do our, through our careers, projects, and donations. And it is also a community formed around this idea. Many individuals and organizations who care about doing good and gather around the ways to do it the most, uh, to find the ways to do it the most effectively. And as all good talk about future, um, I, I'm also starting with the past. Uh, there's there's a cliche that you can't understand the future without understanding the past, but I think it's cliche for a reason because it tends to be true. So, in just a few words, I'm I'm trying to give you an uh, give us a brief overview of the history of the EA movement. Uh, some there's some key dates here. Um, I think usually the start of EA is dated somewhere around 2000, 2009, 2010. But there is some prehistory. Uh, GiveWell, the charity evaluator, was founded already uh, in 2007. 2009, uh, the organization Giving What We Can was founded by Toby Ord and William McCaskill. Uh, and the founders of both organizations still play a big role uh, in the EA movement. 2011, 80,000 hours, the career organization is founded. The Center for Effective Altruism is founded the next year, 2012. And this is actually the time when the term effective altruism uh, emerges. Before that, uh, it was called something else <laughs> or not called anything at all. First EA Global, uh, called the EA Global Summit at the time, was held in 2013. Then the dates get a bit more further apart. Um, 2017 Open Philanthropy, which is currently one of the biggest, or actually I think it's currently the biggest founder in the uh, funder in the EA space, begins operating as an independent independent organization. Uh, another seemingly small thing is that long termism was coined as a term that same year, but I think it's a nice kind of like watershed point that marks a sort of like shift in focus within the movement. Then we have a five-year gap. Lots of things happened there, but maybe nothing quite as easily datable as these. And then 2021, 2022, uh, FTX money starts flowing into EA. The FTX Future Fund is funded uh, 22. And then later the same year, uh, FTX crashes. And that's pretty much where we are at currently. Um, I'm basing a lot of what I'm going to say next on this uh, interesting forum post by Ben West, who is the interim director of the Center of Effective Altruism. So uh, he introduces this idea of third wave of effect effective altruism. So in that description uh, that I just ran through, it would compass the era before coining the term long-termism. Uh, that would be the first wave. So that was the time when things were relatively small, uh, the limiting factor was money. The primary call to action was generally donations to effective charities. People were called to donate. And as a result, the target group, at least implicitly, was middle to upper class people. So the kinds of people who could, who would have lots, uh, a lot of uh, extra money to donate. The flagship cause area during this time was global health and poverty. Some influences, notable influences, included Oxford philosophers. One of the centers of this early era of the movement was Oxford. Um, then there was also influence from Peter Singer uh, very much. And, and then the early, early give well. Eli Hasenfeld, Holland Karnofsky, and, and everybody who worked there. But the carrier side started emerging also rather early on. The second wave uh, is the era when long-termism starts to steal the show or become more prominent. Uh, also, carrier stuff becomes more prominent. Uh, now the limiting factor is no longer so much money as, as people, uh, talent. 
the primary call to actions, which is to carry your changes, uh, and the target audience becomes increasingly university students and early career professionals. The flagship course area switches to long termism, but this uh, is maybe a bit misleading because, like, because the global health and poverty uh, things are, of course, they're still there. Give well hasn't gone anywhere. People are still, and, and donating is still there. Lots of people are still donating. Giving what we can uh, is still encouraging people to take, uh, take giving pledges and so forth. But increasingly, in addition to that, we have long-termist goals uh, preventing any kind of existential risk preventing, also preventing uh, any kind of moral rift, though this is maybe a more more niche course and, and, and so on. And it's, some, some would say, and I think it is true towards the end of this era that actually uh, the long-termist uh, course kind of ec eclipses the global health and poverty. This is, if you look at what kind of organizations had there, stands in the carry affairs of EA global conferences, you could see that there was much less representation relatively from global health and poverty compared to uh, some other course areas. Of course, this is a very rough model. This basically ignores animal welfare, <laughs> which is kind of the third big area, course area in EA. But uh, otherwise, we wouldn't get such nice, neat uh, three <laughs> three wave model. Maybe we could split the second wave in two, as per another a comment, a thoughtful comment on this post. Uh, we could say that basically the end of the second wave is kind of an era of its own. It's the long termist era. It's the FTX era. It's the what we all the future era. So money becomes <laughs> as as the poster put it or the, the commenter put it money becomes silly as ftx enters the scene there was an increasing flow of cash into ea already before that but things became kind of weird uh, during 2022 for a while long-termism became prominent and uh, both within the movement and also more prominent outside the movement uh, due to will mccaskill's book publication but what? Uh, where are we now? I think um, Ben West started uh, dated the start of this third wave uh, in the post giant AI experiments letter uh, March this year. I think we could also date it to the uh, FTX collapse in November last year. So history is being uh, it's, it's very hard to like make this kind of. Um, classifications with history you're actually living at the moment. But some some characteristics of this new era would be less money due to FTX collapse and also due to tech stock falling. It's not just FTX, but also other longtime EA funders are losing, losing uh, net worth due to this. AI safety is going relatively mainstream uh, currently, and there might be some further fallout effect from uh, FTX. There were some possibilities uh, listed, which I won't be going into now, uh, but it's interesting if you want to check, I'll be posting the link to the chat. Uh, well, some some possibilities where the movement might be going uh, by Ben West. Um, and some ideas of my own, some, some trends I'm seeing. EA seems to be more and more interested in influencing politics and institutions. It's been an expressed interest for a long time, but in practice, there has simply hasn't been that much visible work on it. Now, there have been some examples, and I think with the AI, uh, AI safety mainstreaming thing, it might be that that's going to be a new focus in EA, try to influence AI policy. But I think there's also uh, some some indications that uh, influencing economic and and uh, health policy in developing countries is something EA might be going in increasingly investing into. There's been some talk about the split between near-termism and long-termism already for a while. Um, 
I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but I think during the uh like 20 21 22 period i think this was becoming more and more tangible uh now we will see whether the ftx collapse actually mitigated this somewhat or whether this will continue with um the prominence rising prominence of ai there was also a suggestion uh, in ben's post that ai safety might spin off the movement i find this quite weird idea but it's it's worth mentioning there might be some lasting reputational effects from the FTX scandal and and some uh, and the sexual harassment scandals mentioned in the Time article, and partly related to this, there might be some rearrangements in EA institutions in the wake uh, of some some people stepping down and some uh, investigations that have been going on. This is rather uncertain, and and these things won't be highly visible. But my hunch is that uh, rearrangements in the way central EA organizations are run might actually have some trickle-down effects uh, over the years that might end up being quite significant. And then as a last point, I think the movement, uh, we could say the movement is maturing in the sense that EA has now existed for 10 years. So we have, mm, as a movement, it has much more experience about functioning as a social movement EA organizations have collected experience. EA individual people in EA have have accumulated uh, experience, and also EA is getting older. I mean, it's still majority a very young movement, and the people who are coming new, who are new to EA usually are rather young, under thirty, often uh, often in their early twenties. But there's also an increasing number of people who have been involved in EA for ten years or five years, and who are now five or ten years older than when they came to the movement. So there's also that kind of maturing. Okay, now I'm going to stop the recording uh, and we'll go to breakout rooms to discuss uh, the topic.